A Tesla sits for months, then erupts into flames. Another one crashes into a home, killing two. And a bunch of charging stations, superchargers, they're on fire. Why and what's going on? Tesla just had a rough week. A high-speed crash left two people dead, multiple superchargers were set on fire in a suspected arson attack, and a Tesla that had been damaged burst into flames after sitting idle for months. These three incidents highlight some of the biggest concerns surrounding electric vehicles. Fire risk, safety, and even growing backlash against the brand. This video is sponsored by Blazestack Fire Investigation Software. Blazestack is a fully featured fire investigation case management platform that arson and fire investigators rely on to log, document, and report fire investigations. Get a free trial at blazestack.com and request a quote using the discount code STASHED. This first incident is a tragic one. On March 2nd in Woodridge, Illinois, a Tesla was flying down a residential street at high speed when the driver lost control and crashed into a house. And... Of course, the car erupted into flames. It ended up killing both people inside. We're seeing this far too often. An electric vehicle crashes into something at a high rate of speed, and those batteries, they don't handle that kind of impact well. Now, don't get me wrong. These batteries, they're designed to be safe, built to withstand crashes, but only to a point. Most EV battery standards, they're tested for impacts right around 35 to 45 miles per hour. When a crash happens at a much higher speed, all bets are off. Another big issue, the 12 volt system, the low voltage system often fails after a crash. This is something we see with combustion cars too, but what happens is that electric door button, what most occupants are used to using, it stops working. That can leave people trapped inside. Sure, there is a manual door release, and I did a whole video on the manual door release, but in an emergency situation, muscle memory, that takes over. And assuming the occupants are even conscious, they've got to be aware that that manual release exists. In this case, though, the crash was so severe that the doors may have been pinned shut anyway, so all bets are off and you really don't know what was going on. At the end of the day, yes, it comes down to the driver. They were driving way too fast, but you also have to consider how much power these cars put out. The acceleration in a Tesla is instant. It jerks your head right into the back of that seat rest. Seat rest? Headrest? Headrest. And if you're not used to handling that kind of speed, things can go bad really fast. One resident was hospitalized, but thankfully nobody inside was killed. Neighbors actually reported hearing a series of loud crashes before seeing the flames shooting over the roof. One neighbor even said the Tesla had gotten airborne. Firefighters were able to contain the house fire within about 20 minutes, but cooling down that Tesla's battery, that took hours. Just days after that fatal crash in Illinois, multiple Tesla superchargers in Littleton, Massachusetts, they went up in flames. But this was not an accident. Fire officials say the charging stalls were deliberately set on fire in what appears to be an act of arson. I always love the official statements, appears to be arson. Like what, these things are just going to spontaneously combust? They're not full of batteries. Surveillance footage hasn't been released yet, but investigators believe this is part of a growing wave of anti-Tesla vandalism. I really would not want to own a Tesla right now. Lately, Tesla owners have been finding their cars vandalized, spray paint, all sorts of things. But there's also been multiple attacks on Tesla properties. Gunfire at a dealership in Oregon. Molotov cocktail attacks. And honestly... These attacks are just dumb. For fire crews, though, this was a pretty simple incident to manage. Just like any piece of high-voltage electrical equipment, disconnect the power, then put the wet stuff on the red stuff. Thankfully, Tesla makes this really easy. Every supercharger station has a large white electrical cabinet, and inside is a clearly labeled main disconnect switch. They even put an emergency response guide out for responders responding to incidents involving these supercharger sites. Despite the damage, Tesla's repair crews had that station up and running in about 48 hours. Honestly, I'm pretty impressed they were able to get that turned around so quickly. But then, just two days later, another fire. But this one was a little different. In Montgomery County, Maryland, a Tesla that had been sitting inside a home for four months suddenly burst into flames. It was damaged, and that's because back in November, a fire destroyed that home. 
But it wasn't the Tesla that caused that fire. The home was severely damaged for another reason. And the Tesla just happened to be an exposure inside of that fire. That vehicle was fire damaged, but those batteries didn't go into thermal runaway at the time of the fire. And crews just left the vehicle inside. Honestly, that's pretty typical. After a house fire, there's a long process. Investigators, insurance claims, subrogation, all sorts of behind the scenes red tape. It takes time for the homeowners to get approval and time for them to be able to bring in companies and contractors for demolition and rebuilding their house. Usually, if there's a car damaged in that fire, it's going to stay put until all that stuff happens. But here's the problem. We can't treat electric vehicles the same way we do gas-powered cars. That Tesla had already been exposed to fire, which means the battery was likely compromised. And we found out the battery was compromised. With a regular gas-powered car, once the fire's out, the risk is basically gone. But with an EV, that's a completely different story. Delayed thermal runaway is a real thing. If the battery is damaged, it can reignite weeks or even months later. And that's exactly what happened here. This is a textbook example of why EV fires are so unpredictable. Even months after that initial damage, the battery can still have enough stored energy to reignite. Situations like this make it clear. We need better post-fire procedures for those dealing with electric vehicles. It's not just about training first responders. Board up companies, insurance adjusters, fire investigators, everybody involved in the aftermath, they need to understand these hazards. We cannot keep leaving fire damaged EVs sitting inside structures for months waiting for the next fire call. Three very different incidents, but all pointing to the same issue. Electric vehicles in general, they come with a unique set of risks that we still haven't fully figured out how to manage. Whether it's extreme acceleration that can lead to high-speed crashes, the fire risk not going away when those flames are out, or even the backlash against a brand itself. It's clear that EVs aren't just cars with batteries. They bring new challenges that require solutions. Whether you love Tesla or hate it, one thing's for sure, we can't afford to ignore these problems.